Hello, how are you? My name's Sean, my channel's on the road, and I'm currently touring on a long road trip around Ireland. I've owned my van now for nearly two years, so it's about time I gave you guys a van tour. I added roof rails so that I could put two 100 watt solar panels on the roof. I've got Michelin cross climate tyres all around on the van, and I put some window deflectors on. As you can see, there's a sliding window on the passenger side and various decals all around. The rest is pretty much standard, apart from a few little dents. I'm currently on the Wild Atlantic Way, which is the third of those stickers there. Above the sliding door, I've got an LED light that's activated from inside. And I've got a little CCTV camera. And there you can see the solar panels. This is version two of my layout. Originally, I had the kitchen unit directly ahead, but now I've changed it so it runs along behind where the seats in the front would be. However, I've taken the two passenger seats out. This board on the end is for my stickers. There's a sink, a little tap with a pump, magnetic hooks. That's a kick plate from a door used as a splashback on a shelf that's been used as a backboard. Curtains from Kira Vans, they're excellent blackout curtains. So there you can see the front of that unit there is a camper table. Cut a little clips to hold it in place. They're standard for various tables. If you take that away, it opens up the cupboard. Under the sink with all the junk people, all bags, candles, chemicals, everything you can name. With a removable door, you don't have to worry about which way the hinges are and which way it opens, depending on whether you're inside or outside of the van. Small Ikea bin. A couple of mats on the floor. That's a swatch from a carpet shop. Underneath there are just some tubs. There's my little camper cooker. I have got a fancier cooker, but that's under the bed and not in use. I use these tubs because they're so much more flexible than, than restricted space. And therefore, you don't need to have doors that open or don't open because there's no room to open them. Directly in front is the lantern that makes a racket. All the usual stuff in the unit in front of me that's needed on a regular basis. Underneath the bed there, let's tuck in that blanket. Underneath the bed there is a Dometic 20 litre drawer fridge. Now these are excellent. They use so little power. Need stocking up. Next to the fridge, storage net on the front of a little door. I use that just uh, bungee just to hold various things in place, like this tankard and bottles. It looks a little bit awkward, but it works. Little just drip tray that you would have from a normal pub beer pump just to catch any drips coming out of the tank above. Cloth in there. And that works ideally. That's a Lifesaver 20 litre water filter. They're very expensive, but they're brilliant because I can get water when it's not wa drinking water. Fill that up and it's the Lifesaver brand and I've got spare carbon filters for it, but it's good for about 10,000 litres, I think. Various little bits and bobs there, including a torch, a little light, my Wi-Fi. Um, sanitizer and a touch sensitive light switch. If you followed me when I was doing the build, I decided to go for a slightly different interior approach and I've got a diagonal bed in there. Sounds weird, but I'll show you that in a minute. I built a high level entertainment unit. I always stuffed towels across the top. The TV I hardly ever watch and there's speakers and speaker boxes and a stereo down there. Bags across the top hanging up. Another unit there with CCTV. But let me just show you. There's obviously storage. Storage everywhere. This is a lived-in van. Tubs with various bits and bobs in. A drawer up there with pens in and things like that. Behind the telly, if I can wedge it open and everything falls down, is all my medical stuff. Toiletries, aftershaves, tablets... You name it, it's all there. 
Then I've got various tissues on the bookshelf there, but a variety of books in the back of the van. I've got others elsewhere. There's a few things stuffed under there, but my feet actually fit down into that corner. The total diagonal of the bed is 2.1 metres. A couple of fans which are important in the summer. Well, that's the monitor for the CCTV. There's a couple of switches. One to turn on all the cameras. There's four cameras. And that's it in split screen mode. It's a bit fuzzy there, then you cleaning perhaps or it's just not focusing present there from my birthday last year from danielle there's various other switches i've got either white lights or red lights all round. oh so under there are all my charging cables they feed through there's another led spotlight there if i'm reading i can point that out my book storage of tissues up there I hang those up, they're well away from my feet when I'm laying in bed. Now let's have a look in through the back doors. On this side I've got various storage pouches, they're molly pouches, admin power, fire. So there's things like matches, all spare charging cables, paperwork, all sorts of stuff in them. Down the bottom is my everyday carry, um, a Millbank water purification bag that is that ideal to use before the lifesaver there we've got really important co alarm smoke alarm and you can see my camera bag hanging up there under the bed various things stuff there from dirty washing to unused and spare stoves and on the other door you can see a few things hanging up there there's a variety of tools and things you need for camping medical kit that pulls off um, loads of barbecuing bits and bobs there and some things for waterproofing boots. You can see a carp toilet down the bottom. You can see my um, camping chair. That's a fishing toilet, that. And under there, there's various other bits, plates for a grill, um, warning triangles, jump starter for the van, some rope, a tarp. Up here is the ele electrical box, it's quite messy inside, um, it's just held in place by magnets and the wires feed through from there to be charged from the other side, but that's where all my lights and all the power works from, that's where I keep my smalls and there's various other bits and bobs down the bottom there. I mentioned the bed again, at an angle it's over one metre wide and it's 2.1 metres long, but that's at its longest point, point to point. It's usable about 1.9 metres. It's excellent, it's fine for me, I'm 5 foot 10, which is 1.78 metres. So turning on the touch sensitive lights so I can see what I'm doing. A little swivel catch, a sash window catch. Sets an automatic light on and then in there is a little fuse box. There's the plug that comes across from the inverter. There's all the spare electrical connections in a little box there. A bit messy, but there's also a 12-volt socket as well as the 13-amp socket. Various things in there. And that works quite well for securing that. Over to the window here. These are Kiravan's curtains again. They're blackout. Black one side, grey the other. They are awesome. Door stores can set you back under 50 quid. Make one yourself for about 5, 10 quid with some carpet and plyboard. Okay, to prove that it's a tap, I have to turn it on because that's what every other van review does. It's actually quite a small sink and a diddy washing up bowl. I've also got a diddy little trangia kettle. There's another charging point there. I've played around with every system there is over my three camper vans for kitchen drawers and stuff. The best way is just tubs. Pull them out, shove everything in. You get to know what's in each one after a while. And they're easy to sort out. There's no restrictions on doors getting in the way. There's no restrictions on you know hitting your knees, not being able to open the door when you need to, etc. I do only keep a bare necessities of kitchen essentials and I do keep a lot of um, food stuff like breakfast cereals and tin stuff. There's always good powdered milk, things like that. They're always handy. A few herbs and spices, nothing special. Although I've got a Kodak, I much prefer these little things. Cost 15 quid delivered. Take the gas canister. You don't need to have a gas locker taking up half the room. And when you've got a big gas canister... If it's quarter full and you're about to go on a massive trip, you need to change it. What a waste of gas. So then you need two and then you need twice as much storage space. Get the little gas canisters. They haven't really gone up in price considering other fuels have gone up in price massively. These trivets are brilliant. I've got a couple of them. They 
stop hot plates damaging, but they also stop things sliding around. I've had to use my new microphone yet. There's a Blue Yeti on a boom arm. That's for doing some podcasting, perhaps, and, and voiceover work like this. There's the more Kiravan curtains. Again, grey one side, black the other. They pop together. They really are well black out if you move them correctly at both ends. And I've got a little bit of light coming in because I'm not... I'm filming with one hand and not able to get it quite right, but it's it's pretty good. It's not it's not an effort. I'm really showing you that, and it's daylight coming through there, not night time. In the door, I store various chemicals, various things, including the scrubbing brush I used to sweep out the van. There are the screens for the windows. There's also one for the sliding window in there somewhere. There's a storage little area there for maps and stuff on top of that blanket with a crate underneath. I'll show you that in a second. Get the curtain out of the way. That's just for clothes drying. And so, yes, I took out the double seat at the front and I will be putting a single seat in at some point in the future, but I didn't need it for this trip. I'm on my own. There's also a CTV camera, a dash cam, my little wobbly man. This is where I store my shoes. And I'll show you underneath that unit in a moment. Really good phone holder, link will be in the description, reversing cam there, and just the basic stereo in the van, to be honest. Down there is my tool bag. There's also a diesel heater in a toolbox so that it doesn't get knocked. Electrical socket there for if I'm on a campsite, if I'm ever I'm on a campsite. There's also the outlet for the diesel heater. So that's the view in from the driver's side. I've got a couple of those little condensation pouches thing. There's my logo a clearer view of all the switches inside the van next to the bed that do various things include turning on the outside light as i say that's my little charging station there's also a cctv camera there that links up to the internet down there there's socks and stuff and behind there's room to store down the side there's room to store a laptop and ipad and things like that Various cushions around the van. That one says, please subscribe. Please subscribe if you want to watch my adventures. These fans are good. They no longer vibrate since I remounted them. Both can be turned on at once. They are three speeds. You can have them exactly how you want, independently of each other. Okay, that's quickly looking down at the toolbox that holds the diesel tank, not the heater. Heater's under the driver's chair. But my little surplus diesel tank is inside that toolbox there's a proper tank inside the toolbox it just stops the hoses and stuff getting knocked i do not use this porta potty but that's where it's stored great little boat hinges locking on that door but i use bungees as well because i attach things to it that's the thing i showed you earlier which has got the cup and the lifesaver drinks thing that's my wi-fi thing it's got the two antennas because it links to an extra antenna on the roof to boost the signal it's currently turned off on the passenger seat under that blanket was various things books some kitchen things that have, had fallen through my headphones there's another selfie stick and a little light in there and a couple of other things it's just it's just easy storage Underneath, there's a jerry can that holds up to 10 litres of spare diesel. Various cleaning things under there. This unit's only temporary and it's instead of a passenger seat. When I got rid of my double passenger seat, going on this trip, it would have cost me about 700 quid to have got a single one. So I um, gave it a miss and just put this little unit in for extra storage. And one of the things I thought I would do with this unit is store my water and spare water tanks underneath here rather than underneath the sink in the back because it's the things when you're in the back that you need to access and you don't want your water taking up all the room so you can see here that just pulls out i uh, carpeted it just to make it look a little bit better but i've got my waste water and two water tanks there various other things just stored under there out of the way as it's Typical, I suppose, of the garage in anybody's mower home. I've used a whale water pump and I had to use a, a ball valve to restrict the flow because it was too powerful and squirting right over the sink. 
They're all 10 litre tanks, them, so they're easy to carry, easy to fill up in places. And as I say, I will get a single seat at some point and put that in instead. Everything attaches easy. I just put a little popper on that thing on that side using a, a, a little bit of webbing and that's it. It just stays in place nicely. Little, you know, I don't, can't even remember what you call those things. Turnbuckles. And that thing again, just to make it look a little bit tidier. This saves a lot of hassle if you're um, going camping. I have never used it. I've checked it works. As you can as you see, the diesel outlet is there in the front because diesel heaters produce so much heat. You don't want it in the back. It's too much. So I've put it in the front and then whatever heat filters through and it does come through. Underneath there look, is a massive drip tray just in case any of those tanks or pipes leak. I don't want it going down there because under there is all the electrics that were usually under a double passenger seat. Okay, so the box is back in place and that is bungeed just using things like this just to make sure the load doesn't shift while I'm driving around. Okay, so again, you can see where the pillow is on the bed and so I sleep diagonally with the head that end, the feet right under the end. It doesn't look a lot of room but you sink into the mattress. It's a, it was a five foot uh, wide which is a king size memory foam mattress or part memory foam part reflex and it's super comfortable it looks weird but it saved me a lot of space if i'd got a long wheelbase fan i could have put the bed down the length of it but i haven't um, a short wheelbase for me is a lot easier to park but just wasn't an option at the time it would be easy to change this to a different layout most of these units just unscrew from the walls but i'm really happy with it and i use those army style blankets as a as a base before i put my jungle blanket down and other stuff there's a little gap there where the van's slightly wider than the five foot of the king size mattress and that's where i store things like shorts slippers things like that here's a clearer look at the stickers on the back of the van and down there is the camera that's the rear not reversing camera that's cctv the reversing camera is there above the u looking up on the roof i've got a tv aerial i've got a dab aerial water catches at the moment those solar panels and across there you just about saw the pd antenna for the wi-fi one of those panels is not working at the moment which is a little bit annoying but i've still got enough power I hope you liked the quick tour of the van. Hopefully on some sunny day somewhere with a bit of help with the filming, I will make a full, more detailed video showing you everything in the van in full detail. There are links in the description to most things that I've got in the van. If you've got any questions, drop me a comment below. Please like, and if you want to follow my adventures in Ireland, then you can subscribe or click on the playlist and watch all the videos that i've recorded in ireland so far thanks for watching and i'd really like to thank those that have been supporting the channel for a long time